Ready? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Frugal Tech Live. This is episode number 308. We've got a special guest with it, uh, with us today, Mr. Ali Khan Jetha, who we call AJ. He is the founder and CEO of Market Circle. It's going to be a great show. So don't go away. We'll be right back with today's installment of Frugal Tech Live. Everybody, welcome to today's installment of Frugal Tech Live. We are brought to you by this, our sponsors, GFI Software, uh, makers of LandGuard. And if you're looking for a great tool to identify vulnerabilities on your local area network, remediate them, uh, and get some great reports, check out GFI LandGuard. There's a free version, up to five IPs. You can go to our website, frugalbrothers.com, download, uh, go to the Solutions tab. Uh, download your copy of LandGuard today. Uh, I want to get right to it. We have a great guest on the show today, and uh, we're going to get ready to uh, bring him on in just a moment. Uh, we want you to welcome the founder and CEO of Market Circle Software. Now, they manufacture the award-winning Daylight uh, software for the Mac. It's a, I like to use the term CRM, but it's a sales and marketing tool for uh, professionals out there, and also billings time uh, and billing software for the Mac. Now, AJ uh, and his family arrived as refugees from uh, to Canada from the Congo back in 1974, and he went on to study computer engineering at York University. So he had a passion for uh, software engineering, and AJ built a company around Apple computers and the Next Step uh, Consulting. Originally developed his own in-house application for sales and marketing and pipeline management. This led to the transition of his consulting business to a software manufacturer for Apple Macintosh computers, most recently for the iPad and the I, the iPhone. <clears throat> so let's give a nice warm welcome to, uh, we like to call, be called AJ. How are you today, AJ? Very good. Nice to be uh, nice to be here. Oh, fantastic. And uh, uh, you're call, we're talking to you from Canada, right? That's where you're yes, located, Alex? You, yes, you are, yeah, okay. from our offices uh, up in Markham. Uh, and so i got to ask you a first question. What's the weather like up there right now? Uh, it's actually a little warmer today. It's minus two Celsius. Uh, yesterday it was uh, minus twenty-two. Ooh. Yeah, it was cold yesterday. <laughs> Not much better in Decatur, Indiana. Um, let's get right to it. After uh, okay. looking at your bio, you've got really mm -hmm. an amazing uh, story there. Can you share uh, with us a little bit about yourself and the history of Market Circle? Absolutely, would love to. Well, go ahead. Uh, tell us about yourself. I mean, uh, about what the you were born in the Congo. Is that right? Yeah, I was born in the Congo. Uh, our my parent, my great great grandparents are originally from India. Okay. And uh, they went to Africa as uh, laborers, I guess, or or slave. I don't know if it was slave labor or laborers. And my uh, grandfather uh, to to actually help the British build the railways in East Africa. And my grandfather said, you know, screw this, I'm not doing this. And he <laughs> ran into the interior and uh, he built um, uh, a business uh, there. And uh, he grew that business over the years. And eventually, um, uh, you, do you remember the movie The King of Scotland? Boy, yeah, it's been a while, but sort of, yeah, I do recall the movie. Yeah, yeah. You remember, you remember the story of Idi Amin and how, uh, you know, he went a little bit crazy. In the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right, 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 right. It was a great movie, actually. Um, uh, uh, I forget the the actor's name again, but he did a great job. Anyways, uh, uh, we're part of that 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 lineage, and uh, in 1972, uh, he went bonkers and, you know, kicked all. Uh, all foreigners out of the country. Yes. And um, uh, our family was mostly based out of Uganda, but my, my father was in the Congo. Okay. And uh, our extended family uh, had to leave with uh, shirts on our back kind of thing uh, right. in 1972. So if you watch that movie, The, uh, the King of Scotland, you'll, you'll see uh, the events that led up to the expulsion. 
And then in 1974, the Congo, which was uh, at that time called Zaire, mm -hmm. uh, decided to do the same thing and kick us out of there. So in 1974, we left there with the shirts off our, on our backs. And, you know, even, uh, for example, my mom's wedding ring, they, they, they took that from her. Oh, my God. And so you only left with, uh, with what you could uh, have on your person, maybe a small, uh, a small bag for, uh, you know, diapers and stuff like that for the kids if you had kids. And that was it. You were gone. Anything that you had built – uh, in terms of your business or or your home or whatever was was uh, was um, uh, what's the word um, uh, taken confiscated. So uh, so we got to Canada in 1974 as as uh, refugees and uh, slowly we rebuilt. Um, you know we we the family split up. Some of our some of my family is in the UK. Some is in the US. Some is. Uh, uh, in in Denmark, so um, you know whatever countries accepted us as uh, refugees, we we kind of went, and uh, so then we uh, started rebuilding, and uh, here we are. Well, um, that's an amazing uh, amazing path. You've overcome a lot in your lifetime. You started your own business. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your background with uh, Apple. And okay. also, next step, right? I mean, that's... Absolutely, that, yeah. Isn't that what yes. kind of happened when the next computer didn't work out so well for Steve Jobs? They kind of started concentrating on the next step operating system? Yeah, so actually, my original um, uh, brush with uh, Next was uh, 19, early 1990. Okay. And uh, I was in uh, uh, at Seneca College, so I had... Uh, I had left uh, York University because I thought, you know, this academic stuff is just not me. I, I need to get my hands dirty. You know, I got to do something. I can't be reading all the time. Uh, so, so, uh, so uh, you know, I left York and I went to Seneca. And Seneca was a co-op program. So, you know, you, you did school for uh, four months and then you went to work for four months. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> that worked out great because I could work in the four months, pay for the school. Otherwise, I didn't have the money, right? right? So, right. so, uh, so it worked out great. And uh, in during that process, I uh, got to learn about the mock operating system, about object-oriented programming, and uh, this was, you know, late '89, early 1990. And there weren't too many operating systems out there that had these things. Okay. Uh, both the mock operating system and object-oriented programming. Right. Uh, and one day, I just ran across uh, Next World magazine. Okay, and, and um, that was it. I said, you know, that's you know, it had mock as an operating system, and it had um, object-oriented programming in the form of what we call today Coco was uh, uh, was already uh, there in uh, in 1990. So mm -hmm. I decided to jump on that uh, on that bandwagon. Of course, I couldn't find a, I couldn't get a job, but uh, that's a, the second. Do you want me to go into that piece? <laughs> you, 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 absolutely. We're, we're okay. talking, yeah, this is really okay. interesting stuff. So go, please go ahead. So, 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 um, uh, you know the. Uh, so I found out about these next machines. They're like at that time to get the basic machine was ten grand. Right. Uh, I, c I couldn't buy a coffee. Never mind ten grand. Right. right. So, so right. Uh, I had a problem there. So. Uh, I decided to find uh, companies that used uh, these next computers so that I could gain some experience on them. Right? I, I went to uh, University of uh, of uh, Toronto in their in their what um, um, in their uh, uh, what you call it in their bookstore because they had a they had a next machine in their bookstore mm -hmm. and they will only give you five minutes on it. But you know I would go there and I'd get my five minutes and uh, and I'd be scratching my head because uh, new operating system you know you don't know anything about this thing right. Mm -hmm. So anyways I tried to get a job and nobody would hire me because uh, I didn't have a degree. Like, I don't I don't have a degree I have a diploma. Okay. Uh, from Seneca, right? So they would not uh, uh, they they would not hire me because I didn't have the appropriate uh, credentials. Uh, so I would apply. You know, there's about six companies that had access to Next computers in the Toronto area, uh, in the Greater Toronto area, and mm -hmm. I would be like doing circles. You know, I'd be going to the first company, I'd apply, they'd say no. I'd go to the second one, I'd apply, they say no, and you know, I I think I applied a grand total of four or five times to each one of these six uh, six companies, and they all said no, and for the same reasons. Uh, over Just over your credentials. 
just just because yeah. of the fact that I didn't have uh, I didn't have a, a computer engineering background per se. Um, Irregardless I had a, a of technical your skill. background, okay, but not a computer engineering background, okay, and nor did I have a degree of any kind, okay. So, um, uh, in if you remember, I was at Seneca and I was doing the co-op. I managed to get a job as a um, as a tech doing CAD CAM integration, mm -hmm. and um, uh, one thing led to another. This is 1991, where there was a recession here in Canada. I don't know if it was like that in the U.S., but I got laid off. Um, after a few months of finishing school, I got laid off. So there, I'm scratching my head. What am I going to do? So the day I got laid off, I got this crazy idea. I went to one of the companies and I said, you know what? I'll work for free if you give me equal time on one of these next computers. Uh, so okay. you, if you want me to run errands, you want me to, you know, go get coffee, you want me to sweep the floor, you want me to, you know, right. drop packages places, you, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And you give me equal time uh, on, on a next machine and I'll do it for free. Was this to and get experience with web objects? Sorry? Was this to get experience with, uh, it wasn't called web objects that they were working with? No, no, web objects wasn't even around at that time. Oh, it this was? was? Okay. This is 1991. Oh, okay. All right. And, and uh, so I, I got, I got um, uh, you know, they, that company said, okay, fine, fair trade. You know, you, you work for six hours uh, and then you get equal machine, equal time for six or eight hours, whatever it may be. Okay. So I did that and that's how I gained my actual uh, programming experience on on next machines, and <clears throat> after six months, that company went uh, went down. Right, so uh, now the difference I had now is I actually had practical experience, and you know those other companies that would um, um, you know I would apply and they would they would reject me. In in fact, they 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 knew me. You know, I'd walk in and say, Oh yeah, yeah, well, okay, yeah, we have your resume <laughs> from last time. I'll put it back in the pile. Uh, uh, this right. time I said, uh, There's a difference. I I actually have practical experience mm -hmm. so I got I got hired as a um, as a demo um, you know the person that goes the technical person that goes with the salesperson okay uh, set up demos okay uh, not not as an engineer right right and so uh, and I was doing that for a company that made police software and their customers were the likes of uh, the uh, you know Toronto police the London regional police uh, York regional police Etc. So uh, you know, I'd be going out there, and uh, we'd be uh, setting up the demo. I'd be setting up the demos. The salesperson would do his song and dance, and and that was my job for a little while. Um, but one thing kept uh, kept kept uh, uh, being a problem was that at each installation, Toronto Police, London Regional Police, York Regional, there was a specific problem that was driving the uh, customers mad. Okay. Right. right. Uh, so these are next computers. You know, they run Unix. They're not supposed to crash or anything like that. But some of these machines, which had actually live video back then, right, mm -hmm. which was a novelty, right, mm -hmm. for uh, taking mugshots. Oh would, yeah, right. Sure. Would run out of would run out of memory. You know, they would they have to re be rebooted four times a day, and it's like, you know, what do you mean this is not right? The customers would be pissed, and since you know I'm with the sales guy, <laughs> yeah, the sales guy say, well, you know, I don't know anything technical. You talk to this guy. Right. I'd be okay. taking the heat for from the customers as to why these things are not working. Right. Um, and uh, you know they you know they had problems back in engineering or whatever. And one day I said, you know what, I I, I can't take this anymore. So I went in there and I actually fixed some of these problems, uh, and and got the customers happy. And so that's uh, then from there I got into engineering and I did the actual uh, I did actual software development starting in 1992 or so. Okay. Uh, that's how I got into actual software development. What? Um, okay, so what prompted the the beginning of Market Circle? How did you get started with that? So in um, in 1998, in 1998, um, I, I left the uh, another company that I was working with doing um, uh, DNA analysis software on on OpenStep, which was the uh, you know the version of Next Step that ran on Intel computers. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I left there and um, I went and I did consulting work as an individual and I did consulting work on web objects. That's when web objects was kind of in in the, you know, in the limelight. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know I, I worked for customers like GE and uh, you know some other other big names. But I was there just as a as a consultant. Um, and then in 1999, I uh, I decided you know what um, I got to do something different. And um, <clears throat> we, I came up with the concept of uh, of Market Circle. Okay. Now, Market Circle at that time was not what you know it today. It was actually a different company altogether. What what uh, the idea was using web objects, right? Was uh, think of eBay, mm -hmm. but remove the auction engine and put in a negotiation engine. So somebody could could uh, come by and um, <clears throat> put a product up for sale and say, you know, my asking price is $50. Make me an offer. Okay. And somebody, somebody uh, you know, a customer could come by and say, you know what, I I'll pay you $30 for this. And you can negotiate back and forth and say, oh, $30 is too low. You know, how about 40 or 42 or whatever? And so that, so, so the, the, um, the platform was based on negotiations instead of auction. Uh, and the reason, you know, I dislike, I, I think auctions are weird, you know. They do, they are weird. You know, do you go to a customer and, you know, so you start doing an auction? No, you negotiate. So, um, uh, so then I felt that, you know, that's the way it should be. It should be negotiations. And we built a platform. We had transactions going. We had some transactions take as long as two weeks, some as, as short as uh, 14, 15 hours, right, where people would negotiate kind of thing. Uh, we went for uh, funding. Uh, but by the time we got to the major VCs in the, in California, uh, was May 2000. Oh. So you know, you know. Yeah, what happened we know what happens right? next, right? Yes. So May 2000 is when the bubble burst, and uh, and so at that point there was no, we were not going to be able to get any funding. Uh, so we made a decision, like we, the way we built the system and everything is we raised some friends and family money. Um, you bootstrapped. Yeah, we, we called bootstrap. bootstrap. Yeah, we had some friends and uh, family money. We had the system working, etc. But no way, nowhere where we could scale it or uh, where we could, uh, you know, do the uh, marketing and advertising to to drive awareness. So we had to get some money, but that didn't work out. So instead of um, so at the at that point, this was May two thousand. Um, there's a whole story around that, but you know that's for maybe another time. Um, at that uh, at that time, we had to make the decision: do we close the company, uh, and you know the friends and family would be out of out of their money, or do we pay them back somehow? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was with this dilemma here because uh, I gave people my my word, right? Right. So we um, so I decided uh, myself and Mike, who's my VP of engineering, still still with me. We decided, you know what, we'll do consulting work. We'll go back to what, you know, him and I both did consulting work before we did the marketcircle.com stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and we'll pay the people back. And so that's what we did. We did web objects consulting for a little while. And uh, so, you know, we, we took a hit. We, we started the second phase of the company in the, in the hole significantly. Uh, and we got a customer and we were building a content management system in web objects. Uh, and their customers, you know, they weren't the consumers of the software. We were making the software for them, and then they would be reselling the services okay, based gotcha. on the okay. software to right. some other customers, some big customers, actually. Okay. Uh, and we didn't know who those customers were. We just knew these people. Mm -hmm. Turns out that two of their customers were in the World Trade Center. Oh, no. Exactly. So, so now we were, um, uh, you know, we were... Uh, <clears throat> uh, we built the system. They owed us quite a bit of money, right? And this is how we were going to pay our, <laughs> pay everybody yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. And uh, after after nine eleven happened, they they really did try to you know pay off their debt, but they uh, they, they they couldn't. Uh, their customers are gone. You know, like how how could they? Right. Right. And the mood after nine eleven was pretty pretty bad. Pretty glum. Right. So uh, they ended up defaulting and telling, you know, they did try. I mean, it looked like they tried at least. And so here we took another hit. Um, and we lost that, you know, that customer was no longer a customer. So we were doing, once again, we were still doing consulting work. Mm -hmm. But there was a problem, you know, Mike and I uh, and one more, one other person was with us. We would be doing, you know, the coding to get this stuff done. Right. And uh, I'd be responsible for getting the business, right? Okay. Um, when you're doing these kinds of deals, you know, you're talking s several months sales cycle, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes a year. Right. 
uh, you you know you have to follow up you have to kind of you know pick up where you left off three months ago kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, you know those kinds of interaction that happen so in you know in being in code mode all the time you forget this stuff mm-hmm. uh, you know customer would call and say you know uh, where are we at and I'd be like uh, scratching my head and I wouldn't remember where we were at now we were doing all this web objects work on Macs. Uh, and so we, either we would run some stuff in Mac OS or we'd be running in the original Mac OS 10 server. Uh, the original, I believe it was called uh, Yellow Box or I don't know, not Yellow Box, but whatever it was called. Blue, you know, not Blue Box. Anyways, that, that original thing. So we didn't have access to quote unquote sales software or organizational software or anything like that. And so we would be, I'd be losing these sales or these leads because I wasn't managing that process properly. Okay. Um, and so we came to a point where we said, you know, either we uh, we switch to Windows and use something like a gold mine or an act or or you know some of these other tools that are out there. Um, and you know we could do web objects development on Windows. We weren't limited to be doing that development on the Mac. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, so we had to come. We had to make a decision. You know, what do we do about this? Do we do we do this, or or you know what? You know, cockamamie idea. Let's build something for ourselves. Uh, and we decided that you know this was a this is when you're young and you don't have a family yet and you don't have <laughs> uh, you know these right. kind of things. And I I made this decision that uh, you know what. Uh, the world needs a second operating system. We can't. We, you know, if if we just if we end up with one operating system being that being Windows, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're doomed, right? Because there'll be no competition. I did. No, that to, is uh, AJ. I got. I don't mean to interrupt, but that is very very accurate. And just from personal observation, it seems there's far too many people that would love to see just one operating system, Windows. And, mm-hmm. and I don't understand the reasoning behind wanting to deny people choice. Right. I don't get right. that. But you see it all the time in forums and, and so forth. Yeah, no, you, you do see that all the time. The, the, you know, you, you can't go that down that route because no competition, no innovation. When, when Windows was like the thing, you know, in the late 90s, mm-hmm. uh, early 2000s, uh, was there any innovation happening? No. Exactly. No. Uh, there was no innovation because I mean, there was no competition. Microsoft all but gave up, it seemed like, developing the web browser any further than Internet Explorer 6. Yeah, and then and then they only recently kicked back up because they had gained a position of uh, a mono, uh, monopolistic position, right? Right. There was no reason to innovate. Right. There was no motivation to innovate because they had them, you know, 90-some-odd percent of the market. Right. So, so we, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, Mike and I were, were sitting down there and I remember making, you know, I, I made this decision and he agreed with it, which was, you know, we, you know, we can't, we can't, uh, you know, bite the bullet and go use that because the world needs a second operating system. Really. We need to, we need to be able to, uh, you know, we should, we should fight along with Apple on this one. So we decided that we we're going to make our own, our own little app. Mm-hmm. And it was a sing, you know, single user app kind of thing, and we were going to use it as a showcase to say, well, hey, you know, look at this stuff. If we can do this stuff, we can make software for you, right? So still in the consulting kind of mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so, so you know, now we're entering the kind of the third phase of of Market Circle as a company, um, and uh, <clears throat> quite by accident, uh, Apple got wind of what we were doing. And of course, on the Mac, there was no such software, right? Because which is why the the, the original dilemma that we had: do we go on Windows or what? Right. Right. Uh, so they got they got a wind of this, and um, when they got wind of this, they uh, this one gentleman from Apple Developer Relations says, you know, you got to sell this thing. And my response to him was, we we didn't make it, we didn't build it for selling. You know, we it was just a tool for us, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I says no, no, no. You got to sell it. They, they just, just, uh, point blank, and not offering any assistance, other than maybe some guidance, uh, in terms of you know no financial assistance or anything like that. He says you just got to do it, uh, and and you should do it uh, by this date, and you should have you should add these five, six, seven features that that I think are critical, right? At, 
And so we uh, we said, well, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, and so this was um, January uh, 2002 at MacWorld, right? We I was that was my first MacWorld I attended. Never been to MacWorld prior to that. And um, uh, that's where they got wind of this. And uh, so from 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 that led to the fact led to the 1.0 release of Daylight. That tool that we were building internally to to help us organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we built it, our concept wasn't uh, CRM or anything like that. Our concept was, you know, we need a tool to help us build our business, to grow our business. Mm -hmm. um, Which was consulting, so, right? That's that was your business, doing consulting. Well, we were doing consulting, yes, and then but the, the the concepts the concepts that drove daylight were just business in general. You know, it wasn't okay. necessarily right. just about consulting. Okay, handling your leads and that sort of thing. Yeah. So okay. so as a yeah as a general thing. So um, anyway, so daylight 1.0 came out. We got lucky and we got uh, an Apple Design Award for that. Um, <clears throat> and you know, sales started to to come in. Not enough to replace uh, the money we were making from consulting. Mm -hmm. But you know, it was uh, you know it was an interesting venture. You know, at that time I didn't have any kids or anything like that, so it was okay. We could take some of these risks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing led to another. We you know sales increased. We added the multi-user version, um, et cetera. You know, we kept moving along, releasing new features. And by the time 2005 rolled around, uh, we got rid of our consulting business. So at that time is when Daylight took over in terms of revenue generation to sustain uh, four people, five people, without requiring uh, consulting revenue. Well, let me uh, let me ask you this, and that's mm -hmm. that. that um, I mean, that's excellent. I mean, that is a fantastic uh, beginning, and and uh, it's um, you, you you did this thing for yourself, and by sheer Luck, I guess. Destiny, sure whatever luck, the yeah, word absolutely. is. Absolutely, sure luck. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a little bit of luck in it. You know, absolutely. I mean, when people, in all honesty, let's face it, a lot of businesses become successful. There is a little bit of formula of that luck in there. There's just. There, well, you there know, I, I have a bit. saying. What is the definition of luck? Go ahead. Give us your definition. The definition of luck is when opportunity meets preparation. There you go. That's good. Well put. <laughs> So you got to you got to be you know if you if you if your gut says to do it you do it and then <laughs> uh, put yourself out there and and you know the opportunity will come by and if you're prepared it'll be called luck. All right, that's um, remember that that's actually very very good. Did you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, did you understand when you were putting this little tool together? Did were you familiar with the concepts of customer relationship management or was was this, you know, we just wanted to handle our leads. I mean, did you have a kind of an overall understanding of how it would work? Because that really become a hot industry in the 90s, CRM. It was like everywhere. You know, everybody was concentrating on it. Yeah. So, so we knew of the term, right? Mm -hmm. And um, But we didn't – I didn't know – how it worked. I, I just knew the term. You know, okay. I'd heard it. You know, customer okay. service management, whatever, customer relationship management. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what, what, we, what I did was I just looked at the real world in terms of people, companies, you know, opportunities, projects. People play roles in them. And, I, and, and we, mimicked, we mimicked that real world in daylight. That was one of the things that that uh, we always did different in our software. We didn't go for function. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't say, well, you know, you need. We need to track leads. What we did is we built the system to mimic the real world. So if you look at daylight today, it, you know, it, it. We have customers in tons of different industries. So we're we're a very horizontal app as opposed to a vertical app. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that we were we were able to achieve that is because we mimic the real world and the real world, you know, is just in different businesses, it's just configured a little bit differently, you know, just organized slightly a little bit differently. And so we're able to address this vertical, sp uh, this uh, horizontal space as opposed to being very vertical. And that's, that. so our concepts of driving the software are a little bit different than uh, function-based. And so we never really thought about CRM in that sense. It just, 
it turns out that uh, we, we have this thing called the productivity pyramid and the productivity pyramid is about you know growing your business and you grow your business by really two things there's two things you gotta do you gotta get new business and you gotta deliver on your promises bottom line anybody that doesn't any company that any yeah any company that doesn't get new business is dead right unless you right. have funding for a little yeah. while um, <clears throat> and if you don't deliver on your promise eventually you're dead right uh, so, so you got to do those two things, and daylight is built around that concept. And the the first part of it, getting new business, happens to be the CRM component, mm -hmm. right? So it's just it just kind of flowed out out of that <laughs> that that concept, which is why we don't we don't really market it as a CRM, because uh, you know it does more than that, and is also you know we feel that it's more about productivity, and the the, the result of that productivity is the fact that you get new customers and. Uh, the result of the other part of productivity is that you deliver on your promises. So, so uh, those are the concepts that drove daylight. They weren't specific about CRM. Okay. Well, we're getting ready to take a short break. But before we do, I want to remind you, if you're watching on Justin.tv, come on over to live.frugalbrothers.com. That's the chat room that we moderate during the recording of the show. And we are with AJ from Market Circle. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this brief message. GFI Software provides a single source for networking, security, monitoring, and hosted IT solutions for small to medium enterprises. GFI's extensive suite of award-winning on-premise solutions includes anti-spam, email security, email archiving, endpoint antivirus, centrally managed backup, event log management, server-based faxing, network monitoring, removable device control, vulnerability scanning and patch management, and web filtering and security. GFI also offers a suite of hosted solutions including email security and continuity, frontline email defense, and monitoring and remote management. With award-winning technology, an aggressive pricing strategy, and a strong focus on the unique requirements of small to medium-sized enterprises, GFI software can satisfy your needs on a so global scale. There. Please visit us online at www.gfi.com. Oh. There we go. Hello. Now we're back. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us today, by the way. If you're just coming out to the show, we have uh, AJ from Market Circle, the makers of Daylight uh, software and also Billings and time management software. Um, AJ, before we went to break, uh, we were talking about a little bit the way you design, the way you think your tool, or uh, not the way you think, but you designed your tool for kind of a real-world business scenario, right? That's kind of correct. what you were talking about. Well, let's talk right. about the market circle today. And, and just now that you're, you know, got a little bit of, you know, this ain't your first rodeo now, right? And you've, you've, mm -hmm. <laughs> you've mm -hmm. got some time under your belt and you've grown this thing. What's a, how much has Market Circle grown today in the last you know decade? Well, we're we you know we started really off. I, I started the company myself back in uh, 1999, right? Okay. And today we're I think uh, 33 or 34 people. Wow, that's tremendous. And we have customers uh, in at least 101 countries in the world. Okay. Um. You described your product, uh, Daylight, as being kind of horizontal. And if, to the folks in the chat room and watching, a lot of times in the software industry we talk about verticals a lot, that you build an application, for, that means for a specific uh, market, whether mm -hmm. it's medical, you know, medical or, or you, know, you know, a scheduling program for industry, whatever, it's for a specific type of thing. So when you take a product like, uh, daylight, why well, you can kind of tweak that and customize it for whatever you're doing. Is that correct, uh, AJ? Yeah, you can customize daylight, and and sometimes that's considered a double-edged sword because you can uh, you can get a little bit uh, confused by these uh, ab the ability to customize things. Uh, but that is the key in that you know that's how we can you know get a for example an event planning business to use daylight when we never even thought about event planners uh, there is a, a set of uh, customization options there that that allow you to do exactly that now you've remained loyal to the Apple community and the mm -hmm. Macintosh community you've resisted the urge to port uh, a Windows version of this I mean 
All right. Okay. 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 What's the reasoning behind that? Well, you know, um, the reason behind that is uh, okay, number one, resources. Right. To 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 enter the the window space, we we would have competitors in the sense of you know entrenched people like Act, Goldmine, you know, Maximizer, uh, uh, Outlook, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes a lot of effort to actually code there and to support it because of the many million different versions of, of Windows and right. the various problems that they have, etc. So we, and you know, bottom line is we don't like Windows. It's, it's <laughs> Uh, that's an honest answer. I built this company. That's built honest. This company because I wanted to do something that I love, right? That's uh, an honest answer. Yeah. So, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I don't like Windows. Uh, but there's, a, there's, a, you know, the difference between Windows and the web uh, is is really minuscule, right? Because if you use a Windows app and you use a web app, it feels the same. Um, it's not true of a Mac app. A Mac app, when you use it, a native app, and use a web app, you, 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 there's, a, there's a difference. You know, you prefer the Mac app, um, unless it's bad software. Uh, but but uh, on, on the Windows side, we, you know, when, when, some, when we, 50, over 50% of our customers are switchers. So they're either just about switching or they're considering switching, et cetera. And uh, the first few months... Of them having switched is when they, you know, they they call us up and say, you know, I think you should have a web version or 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 you know whatever. And it turns out that all these people that are asking for web versions were people that just switched, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason that they, the the reason the reason they felt it was okay is because they weren't used to the way Mac software is, uh, and it's acceptable to have a semi, you know, subpar experience on on, you know, everywhere. So um, that's why we've resisted. We've resisted uh, on, on the Windows side because of the support cost, the potential competition. Uh, you know, you need big dollars to play in that in that market. And then finally, really, the the true true nature is the fact that you know don't like Windows. Well, that's a no. I appreciate your candor. Okay, um, we here at our company are predominantly Macintosh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we are running a mix of both um, uh, both Windows and, and and Mac, and I I tell you I I've noticed that our support costs for our Macs are much lower in mm-hmm. you know time and, and all that sort of thing and expense, and to get uh, and it thrills me to see people starting to buy Macs and putting them into businesses. Uh, yes, yes, that's a good trend for us. Uh, and so one of the reasons why it's so important for me to, to talk to companies like yours that are dedicated to the Apple platform is because you provide the, the tools that drive business, and that in turn makes it easier for a decision for a company to say, we're going to purchase Macintosh because we've got – here's some great tools out mm-hmm. there. You know. Yeah, in fact, we you know, many times uh, businesses are able to switch to the Mac because of daylight or because of you know something that we do within daylight. Uh, we've had many many a sales order blocked in various places until some you know somebody answers as does daylight do this particular piece, uh, and so we're an important part of business. And we you know we've chosen to to address that small business market one to fifty users, which we think is the growth area going forward. Um, and so we solve a lot of the problems of a small business. You do, you do, you know, and uh, sales and marketing is the life's blood of a, a company. Okay. Absolutely. Ultimately, but don't we, tell, but don't tell a Mac person that. Eh, you just <laughs> it's in the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the word, the word, the words, the word sales. And sales I know, I know. It makes words in the back. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're right. But bottom line, somebody's got to be bringing the money and the business to the door. Absolutely, you cannot exist as a business without you, without that. It's just impossible. You can't. I mean, people just don't throw money at you. Um, and lead management, and all that. It's not sexy, it's not glamorous, but it's what pays the rent. And absolutely, that absolutely. Is, and so you've got a tool that's really unique to the Macintosh world, because uh, mm-hmm. when you you know I too have been looking around for different sales and marketing tools, and 
pretty much all roads lead to market circle. <laughs> that well, that's, how, that's how we like it. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, it's, there you go. I mean, it is what it, you've got the kind of got the market on it. And, uh, I personally have installed it and I'm <clears throat> don't know enough about to speak intelligently about it other than it does seem to kind of make sense out of the box. Just looking around at where everything's at, it's kind of very logical. Uh, you're right. It's very Mac like, uh, in its appearance. Yeah, we could do, we could do better and we will, but, uh, yes, it, it is, you know, I mean, it was built on the Mac, right? So. Exactly. Exactly. It wasn't so, a it wasn't a bastard bastardized port of of some Windows app. Well, you know, you uh, I think where's the problem? I used to uh, have a uh, a company that was a, I was a gold mine uh, reseller mm -hmm. for a number of years, <clears throat> and I always seemed to run into people who used the term bastardize, who would try to take something like gold mine and bastardize it to be not only a CRM tool but also an accounting program. Right. Oh. Right. And, yeah. and and people try to do that all the time, and 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 try to get an application to do something it's not designed to do, not intended to do, and then complain that it's no good because it won't do mm -hmm. it. Right. Yes, and that's that's a big problem. You know, people want everything, want something to solve everything, but you you can't be a jack of all trades. That that is the bottom line. I rather would go with the best of the best that I can afford. Okay, mm -hmm. and use the best possible tools that are best suited for the job. To me, that makes more sense. Let's talk about. Um, so you're, I mean, obviously, you know, you're hiring people. You've hired people. How do you find and retain talent there at Market Circle? Um, you know, we what we do is. Uh, it, it, there's there's no specific formula, but what is what is important to us is the kind of person that you are when you when you come across the doors and you're you know uh, ready to meet us kind of thing. So we're we're a small company. We can't do the various tactics that the the, the bigger boys do in terms of recruiting people. Um, but we know we put our, our our job apps out there either on Craigslist or on here in Toronto, you know, Kijiji or or on our website and various and and and, and people come to us. And um, and then when they do come to us, we the the more important part is is uh, you know finding the right people. And for us, that means a, an important component of that is is fitting in. You know, uh, in terms of your personality, in term, you know, we're not even talking about your, 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 your technical abilities or your, or, or your degrees or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about is you as a person, right? So, um, we're. I'm much more interested in in somebody that has a desire than somebody that has a degree. Um, and so, because you remember what happened to you. Exactly. exactly. I got you. So, <laughs> I got you. Right. So, 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 um, uh, you know, by by uh, by by looking at a person's uh, potential and their and their desire to do something, and keeping the you know the degrees out of the uh, out of the picture at the moment, not not all the time, but at the moment, uh, we get to feel whether this person would 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 fit into our culture or not. Um, and if they do, uh, once we figure that out, then we look at okay, you know, what, what, what kind of you know what, what experience do you, do you have, and uh, and if if uh, if it's good, then you know that's great. If it's not good, then we 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 talk about it. And sometimes we'll we'll hire people that uh, may not be the you know on the on paper the best option, um, but through that that looking at the person. And the, the the desire that the person's uh, desire, mm -hmm. um, we end up with uh, with a pretty good team. Like I mean, we we have a really you know I'm really happy with the people that we have, and uh, you know they've been with us. Uh, our turnover is fairly low. You know it's not a it's not a high turnover high turnover uh, situation, and so uh, that's that's you know the the person's important to us, and I think that's what separates us from how some other companies hire. Well, you know, one benefit, I think, of working in a, in, a, in a smaller company is the ability to have some real visibility for what you do. That too. 
Okay. I think, uh, which is a good thing. And and obviously you don't have a real complicated um, process of, you know, discussing ideas and lots of layers of people to go through, right? Correct. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty flat. I mean, we do have a little bit of a structure because now, you know, at uh, some thirty people and and the deadlines that we have, um, we can't be too loosey goosey. But we were before. Right? We were much more so before. But but we still have it, and it's still you know we we we're, we're st- we still share ideas. We still discuss things, and that's how it happens. That's how some of these ideas come through. But we are under under a lot of pressure right now uh, with with everything that that we have on the plate. Gotcha. With Apple, you know, introducing new platforms every couple of years, you know, it's <laughs> we got to hustle. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't want to get into the whole iPad things. I understand you have now apps you are developing for the iPhone right. and the, the, the iOS. Yes, yes, we have. Oh. I mean, we jumped on the iOS uh, the day we got the SDK back in 2008, the, the, very, the very day. Um, right. And so, uh, you know, we, we think it's an important component of the future. Um, and so there's an iPad version of Daylight, is that correct? Yes, there is. Yes. Okay, because yes. yes. it just came out a month ago, a month and a half or so ago. So this is going to be uh, this is killer, uh, especially for people, salespeople, um, yes, out, is, out yeah. in the field. Uh, you know, just take out their iPad and have access to their information right there. Yeah. Well, what's what what we found that was really interesting was uh, you know when the iPad was announced, we were on on our track. You know, we had a, a crazy development plan for 2010. Okay. Um, we hadn't released Billings Pro yet. Uh, we were just about we just released Billings Touch, so we had a, a very uh, tight schedule. Mm-hmm. And. Let's see. I think we've we froze up with AJ. Let's give it just a moment. It was because there. of our situation or what we thought. You know, they'll sell a bunch of these in 2010, but I think it'll be really hot in 2011 when there's, you know, a lot of you know enough software, enough software momentum. Okay. Now we just uh, lost. So your, I I, I, got, I predicted a, a sales of about three million units of iPad. Three. La- what, in the last three months, it was like, or the last three months of uh, 2010, I believe it was like 7 million units. Exactly. So so I had predicted uh, 3 million the entire year. You know, never mind the last three months, right? So <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, let's let's stay on our track. You know, let's just keep going. I'm going to lose focus, you know, we'll waste time, whatever. So let's just keep moving. Then, uh, you know, they sold, I don't know how many million in 80 days or whatever it turned out. And uh, we kept getting requests, you know, it was a... Uh, you know, iPad version of Daylight coming out. When's that coming out? When's that? You know, like it was. It got to a point where I go, "Oh my God! Like, what's going on?" <laughs> so I decided to call a lot of these, uh, a lot of these people. Now you got to remember, they asked us, right? So mm-hmm. I'm trying to find out what's going on in the market that you would be like haranguing me personally. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> s- s- support emails, request emails, you know, you, if somebody would, s- you know, some of our customers, they know me, they, you know, they see me somewhere, hey, where's the iPad version? It's like, oh my God. So I call these people up and I say, you know, what are you doing? What's changing? What is the iPad changing for you? Um, turns out that it changes their habits significantly. Like uh, 70% of the people I spoke to um, reduced their desktop uh, usage to 15 minutes a week. Wow. Exactly. Um, and and the other 30% when they were on the road, so now these are business owners, you know, I mean that, that, that set of people I spoke to are business owners, sales execs, um, people that, that, that run operations, et cetera, right? So, okay. so high level, sea level kind of people. Um, and, um, uh, the other thirty percent, they said, you know, when I'm on the road, I, I'm just taking my iPad. I'm not taking my laptop, and uh, therefore, you know, I don't have access to daylight. Right. Right. So it was changing the thing, and, and what they were doing was they they felt that you know because the iPad doesn't present a barrier when you open it when you're with the customer, mm-hmm. it makes things a lot more fluid in the in 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 the in, in, in the relationship building process. And here, one of the important pieces of our application is is relationships, right? I mean, that is part of business. That's what you do. Um, sorry, you broke up there. That's what you do. You're in the relationship yeah, exactly. business. 
exactly. So we decided, okay, you know what? We better we better change tracks here, and get this uh, this this iPad version out sooner rather than later. Right. So we did change uh, some tracks, and that's how the iPad version came out uh, late last year. Now it did that, it did delay us on other things. No, but, well, you, but what you did makes a lot of sense, and you know it's for all practical purposes. You could almost make this analogy. Um, uh, the, the iPad is a Mac, it is maybe even the Mac of the future. I don't know if we can go that far, but right. it's a computer, and it can happily replace what a lot of people use a, a desktop machine or a laptop for. And mm -hmm. Apple's selling more iPads than they are Macs, yes. in, as far as numbers go. Um, personally, I'm, I'm going to give you my opinion, even though you didn't ask for it. I think the Windows based tablets aren't going to go anywhere in the marketplace no they aren't oh, okay and it's going to be a long run for the ipad and yes it is yes, yes. and more and Th more there'll covers. be a day there'll be a day where people will be buying some people will be buying an ipad and that's it or ipads and that's it they won't have that's all they'll stuff. need that's all they'll need yeah, and some other people always need a desktop computer or a laptop because of the nature of the work they do. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, you're not going to program on an iPad, right? No. Uh, but but other people, like for example, when when I'm when I'm not coding, I still code occasionally. But when I'm not coding, I don't need my uh, uh, my laptop. I can get I can do just fine with my iPad, right? I can go I can go weeks without using my my. Uh, my desktop computer when I'm not coding, when I'm not doing that kind of work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. or, or as Steve Jobs says, you know, the, the truck driver kind of work. Right, right, right. People, right? some people need trucks, others need cars. Exactly. So, so that's an example of, of, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, you can, you can do quite a bit with it and you don't need that thing. And so I've been, I've been, I've experimented. I've been able to go like almost three weeks without touching my desktop. Well, you know, the thing is, for your business, for your products, mm -hmm. this is a must-have for an iPad. Sorry, it's a must-have, and I can see why your yeah. customers were saying, hey, <laughs> get, yeah, get, no, get it to us. I just didn't expect... Uh, well, uh, that, but that it's a good thing, awesome. though, right? What I didn't expect was a number of people jumping on it as quickly as they did. But it's a good thing, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a great oh, problem yeah. to have, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely, it's a great problem <laughs> So, Just you know, we're trying to ask Steve Jobs to you know give give us a bit of a gap between the platform launches. So what what challenges is Market Circle facing today? Well, I mean, you know, we have <clears throat> you know we have now the Mac, we have the iPhone, we have the iPad. Even though the iPad and the iPhone have iOS, the interactions on them are significantly different. That you can't just you know move move the app over there and you know make it a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it it just works. You gotta you gotta change the interaction model uh, a bit, and so uh, so it's really a third platform. So we 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 have three platforms there that we have to uh, design for, uh, maintain, manage, support. Uh, so it, it that that's uh, getting a little bit tough. And then of course our applications they have to work together in the sense that you know if I have my my uh, my iPad. The data that's there, I also want on my desktop, or maybe one of my colleagues needs it. So it's not mm -hmm. like we can develop applications exclusively for the iPad. That's not what we do, right? We do we do a, a system. Uh, so that that poses some challenges in terms of just the breadth of everything, and and you know making sure everything hangs together and synchronizes okay. So we you know un, unlike some of the other uh, applications that are out there, we actually it's th these are native apps that synchronize. So mm -hmm. you can use them whether you have a connection or not, or whether you have a slow connection or a fast connection. You have the same experience because they synchronize in the background. So, <clears throat> so um, um, you know, it, it's it's quite it's it's a lot to it's a lot to manage. Um, also, uh, you do you have a lot of uh, plugins uh, available for, uh, for example, for daylight. Yes. Uh, with accounting applications and uh, mailing list managers and all kinds of stuff. Does, yeah, does yeah. that present its own unique set of challenges as well? Uh, to a degree, because uh, some of those plugins, you know, um, 
when, when somebody wants to do a plugin, which is great for us because right. it just means, you know, that, that helps us really. Right. Uh, turns out that every plugin needs something a little bit different, you know, access to, to data that we didn't think somebody would need or, or whatever. So uh, it, it presents a challenge in the sense that sometimes we have to maybe add something to the lower layer of the application so that whoever the plugin developer is can actually gain access to that information and do their thing. Uh, so that does sometimes does pose a challenge. All right, but so, we're getting better at it. So, so what's next for Market Circle? So, what's next for you, next for you, AJ, and your company? Well, you know, we're we're working as always on the next versions of things. Uh, we don't we don't talk about future products per se or dead or, or or dates or targets or anything because we invariably miss them. Um, we don't want to disappoint. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, we have to be cognizant of the general um, change in in uh, in computing or in business computing, perhaps I, I would say. Uh, and you know, iPad, um, things like web apps and all that are changing people's mm-hmm. behavior, people's perceptions, and we have to adapt to that. So, for example, uh, uh, you know, one one thing that we're working on that we've already uh, started betaing actually, privately, is a, a cloud a cloud hosted version of Billings Pro Server. Mm-hmm. Billings Pro is our new product. Okay. Uh, people just don't want servers anymore. You know, they don't want to even if though it's a Mac Mini or an iMac that you that that acts as a server for our software. You know, people don't want to manage that. So. Uh, we've developed software. We've taken it's taken you know it's been uh, quite an effort to uh, develop software that helps us uh, quote unquote host uh, at the database environment on on a it's not just a database there's a whole environment around it uh, mm-hmm. for for customers and so that's uh, you know something that we're working on and we're 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 getting close to uh, ma- getting to a public beta on that. Well, that you know you said the whole server thing. Yeah. Um, um, we see it all the time. More and more people are looking for, you know, a hosted solution, and they definitely don't want to buy the infrastructure and pay people to keep servers going and that kind of thing. Um, right. So, it, yeah, that would be a logical thing to do. And then uh, would the databases also be then hosted on your servers and backed up and looked after there? Absolutely. So what would happen, what's different, what's unique about our offering is the fact that you'll have a native application such mm-hmm. as Billings Pro, you know, we'll be starting off with Billings Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a smaller, the smaller problem set to solve than a than a daylight. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you know, you'll have a native application uh, that you'll be able to share that synchronizes automatically with mm-hmm. a native iPhone client, and that actually has also a web client um, that you don't have to worry about the server. Right? If okay. you have a slow connection that day, you're not, you know, your work's not going to be slowed down because mm-hmm. you're using native. You know, you're using local data at native speeds. Um, you know, you're you can work when you don't have a connection. Maybe you're in the plane. Maybe you know you're in some place. Believe it or not, uh, there are a lot of our customers that have very poor network connections. Uh, even 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 in the U.S. and Canada, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some spots that just you know there's just very little coverage. So uh, our offline uh, functionality has been a, a godsend for them. And our automatic sync in the background uh, has worked really well for them. So now imagine that with with uh, cloud-based uh, server. So we feel that we we're going to have a good, quite a good story to talk. talk that's going to be great. That. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. going to be great. Um, I'm going to ask you as we get ready to close out the show. I always because uh, uh, we have a lot of people who are business people, they're entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs. And whenever we get somebody successful, we always like to ask a, a, a question. That question is this. If you could only provide one piece of information, business advice, to an entrepreneur, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, no. Did we freeze up again? We, we lost it. There we go. You're you're back. Hey, uh, Bruce. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> that's that's okay. Okay, he's back. Well, that was a cliffhanger, folks, wasn't it? Okay. There, yeah, yeah, that was it, eh? wasn't it? <laughs> that was a great exit. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> let me restate the question. Um, 
if, uh, as I said, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, business people, people that make their money with computers. That's what our shows, this is who we're for, our, our mm -hmm. program's mm -hmm. for. If you could only give one piece of a business advice to an aspiring entrepreneur, what would that piece of advice be? It would be persistence. You know, you, you got to know sometimes when you got to call it quits, but at the same time, you have to persist and you have to, you know, uh, have the attitude of getting over the over the next hump because sometimes getting over the next hump is exactly what you need. And if you end up giving up a little too too early, it was it's all for naught. So persistence is um, is one of the pieces of advice I, I'd like to I, you know I, I'd like to share with people is you you got to fight. All right, you know? that's a wonderful answer. Folks, we've had uh, Mr. Uh, Ali Khan Jetha, also known as AJ, the founder and CEO of Market Circle, on our program today. And you can follow Market Circle on Twitter, at Market Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, AJ, I always like to give our guests the last word. Uh, so is there anything you'd like to say to the folks that will be watching this program? Well, I would say, once again, if it's entrepreneurs, you know, Remember, persist, and remember that luck is the the definition of luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So work hard. <laughs> All righty, everybody. Well, this uh, wraps it up for today's edition of Frugal Tech Live. Uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, we'll be back on Sunday with the next edition of Business Computing Weekly. Uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed this program, and we ask that you follow us on Justin.tv. Uh, that shows your support for what we do. Remember, if it's in your shop not making you money or saving you money, get it out of there. This is Bruce Naylor, Frugal Tech. We'll talk to you later.